Hey, I'm Justin. Today I'm up at Rocky Mountain National Park camping and I'm going to show you how I convert my minivan from a one-person sleeper to a two-person sleeper. Before I start the conversion from the one-person sleeper to the two-person sleeper, real quick overview of how the one-person sleeper works. I've got the bed set up here on the driver's side, and as you can see, I have a living room over on the passenger side in the back, which works out great for one person to sleep here. Now, I'm not going to do the full overview of the storage options and the details about one person sleeping. I've already got another video about that, so if you're interested in that, check it out. I'll have a link in the description. Now, for the two person sleeping mode, it's less about having space in here to hang out and more about making this comfortable for two people to sleep in here. Future Justin jumping in with two quick things. One, we're doing the conversion from one person sleeper to two person sleeper here at the campground. Normally we, I would do it at home, get everything set up perfectly, secure the bed with tie downs, and then we're good to go drive with the vehicle and the bed already set up. Two, you might notice this beautiful Rocky Mountain National Park view behind me. Stick around to the end of the video. I'll talk a little bit about minivan camping mindset and we'll get a whole lot more of this view. Step number one when converting from one person to two person sleeping is to put away my living room. So I'll put this chair down, fold it down, and now we're gonna have room for that other bed. Now, one thing I wanna show you here, if you can come in close, is with the one person sleeper, I actually had a little bit of extra room between the bed and the side wall of the van. And that worked out nice. I had a little bit of storage there where I put things like my uh, window shades, uh, etc. But when we're down in two person mode, we don't have an inch to spare. Each bed is 24 inches wide and I have exactly 48 inches between these two walls. The reason I bring up the width and the fact that I have to go flush with the wall is I wanna show you something. If I slide this bed over all the way, you'll see that it slides down between the third row seat, which is folded down, and that side wall. So we have a little bit of a problem there. The way I resolve that problem with the bed sliding between the third row seat and the wall is I've got this custom cut piece of plywood. Now everybody out there, this is the only cut of wood I've got on this build. Does this still qualify as a no build? I'm not sure. So I just call it a almost no build. Just to be clear, I didn't cut it myself. A friend of mine cut it for me. So for me, it was no build. In any case, I'm gonna slide this in now. I've got that piece of plywood laying flat now on the folded third row seats. You can see it fits perfectly, real flush against the wall. My friend also built this little wooden lip makes it difficult for the bed to move forward. Of course, I'll also have tie-downs for the bed, which will prevent it from being able to move. Now, over here, I've got the bed moved all the way and flush against that wall. So, let's get that second bed in. This is the other bed I'm about to put into the van. And before I do so, it's actually a good way to see the folded up trunk mate and what it looks like when it's not fully extended out in the van. You can see it's pretty compact and it's lightweight. So let's go put it in the van. It slides in perfectly. Now before I extend it, I'm actually gonna bolt these two together so we actually have one bed. I've got these two bolts I'm gonna use. They come with the trunk mate and I'm going to attach them to the two beds to make them one. I'll get started with this one. I've got both of the bolts tightened up. These two beds are now a single bed. Next step is I'm going to extend this out all the way and we're gonna have our second bed set up. Before I extend out the bed, let me show you the supports. These wooden supports come with the trunk mate bed and you can see you can adjust the height 
of the legs and you can adjust the distance between the legs. I've already got it set up just right for my van. So I'm gonna put it back in place and extend out the bed. Converting from one person sleeper to two person sleeper was pretty easy. Got that second trunk mate bed in here, right up next to the first one, bolted them together, extended out the aluminum poles, set up the supports, and then just unfolded out the bed. Not bad. I'd say for me, the first time I set it up, it took me a little time to get those wooden supports just the right height and width to fit my vehicle. But once I did that, I put some pen markings on there so that in the future I'd get it right the first time. No big deal. Now that we've got the bed set up, Helen's gonna lay out her camping mattress and sleeping bag, and then we'll give you a little tour. While Helen's getting her sleeping bag set up, I figured I'd take a quick break and let's appreciate the view here at Rocky Mountain National Park. We're camping at the only campground that's open during the winter. I believe it's called Aspen Glen. We don't live too far from here, so we just came up here for the night. And what a beautiful night it is. Look at this golden hour. Obviously, in two-person sleeper mode, the focus becomes getting two adults to be able to sleep in this minivan comfortably, which I think we accomplish. Now, we lose a little bit of storage area, but not all. So let me show you the storage that we still have inside, even in two-person sleeper mode. We've still got some room in front of the beds, between the beds and the passenger and driver's seat. I'm using it right now to store my clothes and some other things. And I put my pillow right on top and it's perfect for me because I'm quite tall. So any extra room for me to sleep, the better. In addition to that area in front of the beds, we still have quite a bit of room underneath them. Now we do have the supports there, which take up some of that room, but believe me, you can fit quite a lot underneath these beds. Justin kept talking about losing his living room, but he didn't mention we got this terrific covered back porch with quite a view tonight. And even though we don't need it because of rain, it's coming real handy when there's rain, we can just sit here and enjoy the, the view. Another thing I really like about this sleep setup is we both have our own nightstand where we can have our water bottle our phone, our book, and whatever else you like to have nearby. With so much of the interior now dedicated to the beds, it's important that we talk more about the storage. I showed you the storage we have in front of the beds and under the beds, but of course it's critical for us to have this rooftop cargo carrier. This is an extra large Thule and it carries a lot. This is just a one night trip, so I don't have our trailer hitch cargo carrier on there, but for an extended trip, that would also be necessary to have storage. We put firewood back there, a couple of totes. Really now with the rooftop cargo carrier and the trailer hitch cargo carrier, plus whatever storage we have inside, we've got plenty of storage. I just want to speak for a moment about mindset. This minivan camper setup that we have works great for us. The minivan is a great everyday vehicle and we're able to very quickly convert it into a camping setup, which we're happy with. And when it's the two of us, we're using it mostly for sleeping. You know, it's not really van life where we're living inside the van. We're out and about and really spending most of our time outside, but we have a nice comfortable place that's dry and a little bit warmer to sleep. And for times like this, a great place to take in the view. The nice thing about having the beds all set up is whenever we come across a nice spot, we can just lay down and enjoy the view. As we drive off into the heart of the Rocky Mountains, if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel.